In this part of the course, we are going to take a closer look at the standard template in Visual Studio. So the first thing we have to do is to add a new uh, project to the solution. So I'm going to add a new project with the name um, 0, uh, 0103 because this is video number 1.3. You don't have to do that. You can also just work in the same project and follow along. This is just for me to make it easier um, to figure out where I am at. And these files will also be downloadable for people that support me on Patreon. So they can just go to the Patreon page and look at um, project 1.3 to find the project that we are working with in video 1.3. Okay, so to add a new project, we have to go to the solution here and right click and say add and new project. And then we have to select the console application, of course. And down here, we have to write a name. So I'm going to write in scope underscore underscore zero one because it's video one point zero three. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. So as you can see here, Visual Studio has added another project under this solution. So now we have a solution one point one and one point three. So the reason we don't have a 1.2 is because in the last video we didn't do any code. So there's no reason to create the new project. Also, if we right click on the solution and open in File Explorer, you'll see that there are two folders now. One for 1.1 and one for 1.3. And as you can see, it's still the same solution. There's only one solution here. So that's how we can actually add more projects to the same solution. As you can see, the new project here also has a program file just as the old project has. And you can see you can double click on it to select the program file under each project. So the program file here is standard for every single new um, Visual Studio, or, or I mean C Sharp project, right? And you can look at it as some kind of starting point of the program. So the program class is where the program starts its execution. As you can see, there are lots of different elements here, and I would like to go through these elements one by one so you understand what they are. In the top here, we have something called namespaces, and these are the included namespaces in this file. So in general, if you have some namespaces up here that you're not using, you can always delete them. Right now, we're not using any of these because you can see they're grayed out, right? If you compare this color of the text to this color down here, they are more faded than these. And that means that we're not using any functionality in these namespaces at the moment. For now, we should leave these. But in general, as I said, you can always delete namespaces you don't use. So an included namespace has written the name using and then the name of the namespace. And this will include the code inside a namespace name system so that we can use it down here in our program. So the reason we do that is because a namespace can contain functionality that we need to use in our specific program. But as I said, right now we are not using them. But when we start writing some code in a moment, you'll see that they will be ungrayed out some of them or fade in so that we can see that you're using some of them. So an example of uses of a namespace, let's say you have already written some code for, a, let's say, a game where you have an enemy and a player and the enemy can follow the player and to kill him. So you already wrote that code for an old project. You can make that old project into a library and then include it by using a namespace. So that when you create a new project, you don't have to write or copy paste the whole code. You can just take the old project and include it as a namespace so that you already have the functionality for following the player, for example. So that's the point, right? When you have some code you already have written, you can make it into a library and reuse it in other projects. And that's exactly what's happening here. Microsoft has created a lot of functionality here that we can take and use in our program so we don't have to rewrite it. So that's what's up here. Down here is your own namespace. This namespace is included when we create the project. As you can see, this one has in, is in namespace 01001, and this one is in 0103. So I know this might seem confusing, but for example, if we had some functionality here inside in scope 0101, and we would need to use it inside 03, we will have to write using um, in scope and then 0101 like this. We can't do it right now because we need to do something extra to do it. But in, in 
in theory, this is what we would like to do if we had something in this project we would need to use over here, right? But I'm sure this is a little confusing, but it will make sense when we start writing code and when we start to create our own projects and libraries. So that's about namespaces for now. Just look at it as a headline for your own project so that you can ref reference it other places, right? Okay, so we have something called a class here, as you can see. And this class is called program and all projects has this program as a standard class. Later we are going to create our own classes, for example, player, enemy, bullet and so on. But for now we are only going to work in the class called program. So all the code we are going to write will be written inside a scope of a class with a few exceptions though. But in general, every time you write some code, it's inside a class scope. So what's a scope? Well, as you can see under program here, there's a curly bracket start and a curly bracket end. And these two together are called a scope. You can also see when I click the top one, the bottom one here is going to light up also. And that's because this is inside the class scope. So everything inside this start curly bracket and end curly bracket belongs to the class and the class scope. So that means that the main function in here is under the class scope and it belongs to the class. So a class always has a begin scope and an end scope. And as you can see, our namespace also has a scope. It has a begin scope and an end scope. And this class belongs to this namespace because it's inside the namespace scope. So the class is contained inside the namespace scope. The function is also inside the namespace scope, but the function is also inside the class scope, right? So you can go further in all the time like this. So main here is what we call a method, right? And for now, you can just ignore this static void here because it's not going to make sense for you right now. But later, we are going to go into details with these two things so you understand what it is. And we are also going to create our own methods later. So the main function here, or main method, sorry, is actually the starting point of, um, of the program. So when I start executing the program, this method is going to be run first um, at the first, right? As you can see, the method also has a scope. That means every line of code that we are going to write in here is going to belong to the main function, you know, main, main method. I'm sorry if I say function instead of method sometimes, but in general, a method is something in object or in the programming when you have a class with some functionality in it. And a function is more in a scripting language when you have some, some functionality like this, right? So sometimes I might mix them up, um, but in general, this is object oriented programming and we have objects. So this is a method instead of a function, right? So sorry if I, I just mixed them up. It's not to confuse you, but in general, I would try to say method. So because of the scope, everything that is declared, new, new functionality that is declared inside the method scope will only be reachable in here. Because as you can see, you will not be able to reach some code right here, out here, because this scope is outside this, right? But if I write some code up here, like so, it will be reachable in here because this scope is inside this scope. So you can only go from outside and in, you cannot go from inside and out. But of course, this will also make sense when we create some functionality, we can reach outside and inside. I think that's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to write our first line of code. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.